welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be taking you through a video that shows you how to calculate distances on planet Earth. Now this is our first little video in this short series. In a future video that will be coming out shortly I'll be creating um, how we derive the formulas that are shown in this video. But this video here is for those of you who aren't really interested in the mathematics behind it. You just want to know how to apply the formulas. In our second video we'll actually derive the formulas and show you how we get those using trigonometry and then in our final video in this series we'll use some complex examples that have been taken from past papers so do stay tuned for those future videos you'll need to subscribe to the channel and hit your notification button to get a notification when they come out now this part of our series is aimed at year 12 students across our Australian syllabuses all the way on the west coast for maths applications to general maths in Queensland Okay, so let's have a quick recap about what we know about our planet Earth. We have these, well, they're not imaginary because they actually exist, but they're not actually physically drawn on the Earth. They are human constructs. We've got these great circles. These are circles that have a radius that extends from the center of the Earth, and that's the true definition of a great circle. Examples of that definition would include all our lines of longitude, because they are our big circumference circles that wrap all the way around the widest parts of the Earth, and our equator, which is our longest one around the center of the Earth, where it's the hottest in the world. We've also got small circles. Small circles are also human constructs. They're not literal lines that are drawn on the land. And these are ones that have got radiuses that do not extend from the center of the Earth. So these would include all of our lines of latitude except for the equator. Now I've got a little summary sheet here and I'll be showing you this summary again at the end of the video with some extra information on it. If you'd like a copy of this recap, please email me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com and I'll be happy to send this little recap sheet out to you. So let's have a quick look at the information that's on here. Firstly, we've got latitude versus longitude. So usually our circles for latitude are small, whereas longitude is always great. Our latitude lines are drawn in the directions from east to west around the earth. However, we measure them in degrees north and south of the equator. On the other side, we've got the longitude lines. These run from north to south, but we measure them east and west of our prime meridian, which is in the UK. Our central measuring point for our latitude is the equator, and we measure above and below that. So you could think of it almost like a number line, positive and negative, and that will make a bit more sense shortly. And we've got our prime meridian for the longitude. A good way that I remember latitude is it sounds like a ladder. So I think of rungs moving up and down. Whereas longitude, another way to remember that is that all the circles are great circles. That means they are longer by definition. They have a bigger circumference. Another thing that's really important to remember is that our latitude is always stated before our longitude. The way I remember this is that latitude, LA, comes before LO in the alphabet. And that helps remind me that I need to state my latitude first. If you do get it back to front, then you'll probably lose marks in your exam for not stating it with the units of measurement correctly. So it's important to remember it. Okay, let's talk about points that are on the same great circle. This is going to be either the equator or lines of longitude. So we're trying to find the physical dif distance in kilometers usually between these two points. So when we have the same longitude, so think about these great circles, and we want to calculate that distance, we have this magic number for every degree of longitude. It's 111.2 kilometers approximately. So you're gonna not need to memorize that, that's on your formula sheet. But that's your 111.2 is your magic number. Now in a future video, I'm gonna show you how we derive that information, but that's not important here today. So we need to multiply that magic number by the dis distance between those two points in terms of their angles. You'll notice that their um, coordinates are given as degrees, which means they are an angle from the center of the Earth. So that angle of latitude, we're gonna calculate the difference between those and multiply them by this number 111.2. And this looks like this on our formula sheet here. The distance equals 111.2 multiplied by that angular distance, also called an angular difference. So let's look at an example here. P and Q are two points on the Earth's surface with coordinates given respectively. Let's calculate the difference in the distance between P and Q to the nearest kilometer. So notice first of all that both those points have the same longitude of 30 degrees west of the prime meridian. 
Now, because it's longitude, that gives us our clue that we're going to apply the rule that we've just talked about. There's a different rule for the same latitude, so we need to bear that in mind. Firstly, we need to calculate the difference in the latitude. One point is point Q, it's 39 degrees north. The other point, point P, is at 27 degrees. So they've got this difference of 12 degrees. And we know they've got the same longitude. So we're not going to do anything with that 30 degrees. That stays as our clue as to which formula to use, but we don't actually use that number at all. Okay, so firstly, we know that one degree of longitude is our magic number, 111.2 kilometers. So the distance is going to be 111.2 times that angular distance or the angular difference in the latitude, which is going to be 12 degrees. And therefore, we get a distance between the two points, P and Q, of 1,334 kilometers. Now, we did have to round that to the nearest kilometer, so I'll be rounding that one down. Now, let's think about if we had points on the same longitude, but the latitude, we've got one that's above the equator and one that's below. And that's the case with this example here. I've got point A is north of the equator and point B is south. You might be wondering, what do I do in situations like that? Well, first of all, again, same longitude. So we use this same formula again for great circles. Important that we remember that is the rule for great circles. Now we've got this point that's above. And if we think of that equator as being zero, we've also got below and we're wanting to work out the difference. Now, if you think of positive and negative numbers, if I had a number that was above zero and a number that was negative, if I subtracted them, the negative negative becomes a positive. So really in these cases, to work out the true angular difference, I'd have to add them together, not do 15 take away 11. I'd have to do 15 plus 11. So let that one just settle on you for a moment. When you've got points that are on either side of that measuring place, the equator, you're going to add them together. So firstly, we're going to write our little rule again. One degree of longitude equals 111.2 kilometers. And then substitute it into our formula. D equals 111.2 times the angular distance. So we're going to calculate that difference in latitude. We've got that 15 degrees, sorry, the 15 degrees south plus the 11 degrees north. So we've really got a difference of 26 degrees altogether between those two points. And if we multiply that out, we get to 2,891.2 kilometers. So that's how we calculate points that are on the same longitude. You might be wondering though, what do I do if they've got a different latitude? Well, when we've got a different latitude, we have a slightly different rule and it's up to you to remember the difference. So when the latitude is the same and we wanna calculate the distance, we need to multiply that distance by the difference in the degrees and the longitude. And I'll show you what that looks like. We've got a new formula here. It looks like this. D is equal to 111.2 cos theta times the angular distance. Now you would recall before that we used our angular distance was the difference between the two latitude. Well, this time it's gonna be the difference in longitude. Theta is going to be that common latitude that they've got. Now, a lot of people get the two formulas mixed up and they wonder why is this one the latitude formula and the other one's the longitude formula and they switch the two. And that's probably the most common mistake I see on exams. Now, without deriving the formula for, me, for you, which I will do in a future video, um, it's up to you to memorize that this is the latitude formula, same latitude. And that's the one you use the trigonometry for. So let's do an example between Bowen, which is in Queensland, and Port Hedland, which is in Western Australia. Notice that we've got the same latitude here, 20 degrees south. They're both south of the equator, but they've got, both got different longitudes this time. So here's my rule. One degree of latitude is equal to 111.2 cos theta kilometers. I write my formula down that was given to me on my formula sheet. And now I've got to work out the difference in the longitudes between Port Hedland and Bowen, which is going to be 148 take away 119. Now the common latitude they have is that angle theta. So that's the 20 degrees there. And that, this is the only time that we actually use the common information is when we're finding the difference in latitude. You notice in the previous formula that the common longitude was only relevant for deciding that that was the formula we needed to use. We didn't actually use it in the formula. Whereas here, it becomes an angle of theta. Now it's really important 
and that your calculator is set on degrees mode. There should be a little D in a box in your screen. If it's set on radians mode, which has happened to me on occasion, by accident or on purpose, then it's gonna calculate the wrong answer for you. It'll be completely wrong. So make sure you're in degrees mode. Pop this information into your calculator. You're gonna have 111.2 cos 20. You can just type it exactly like that, multiply your answer by 29, and you're gonna find that there's 3,030 kilometers between Bowen and Port Hedland. And there's our differences there in our latitude, that's where, in our longitude, sorry, that's where we got our information from for the formula. So here's our summary sheet again. This time I've now added those two formulae to it. So once again, if you'd like a copy of that, please don't hesitate to email me and we will shoot that straight over to you. Well, that's all we've had time for today on McClatchy Maths. We are now on Facebook. So why don't you look us up on Facebook and follow us? We have little tips and tricks and we let you know whenever there's a new video coming out. Um, I'm Natalie McClatchy and this is me signing off from McClatchy Maths. Do stay tuned for the next videos in this series when I will look at some more complex examples as well as show you how we got the formula for these two formula sheets. Some people are interested in that. Some just want to use the formula. Have a great day.